Hi, Huckleberry here, and today I'm going to take a deep dive into the TCP three-way handshake. Now, most folks who have been exposed to networking for even a short amount of time can tell you that the three-way handshake is SIN, SINAC, ACK. But what does that mean, really? In this video, I'm going to give you the nitty-gritty details so that you'll understand everything you need to know about the three-way handshake. Why is it important to understand the three-way handshake? because it's really the basis of understanding TCP itself. So, at the most basic level, what is it that the three-way handshake does? It establishes a connection between a client and a server. So when they say that TCP is connection-oriented, it's the three-way handshake that creates the connection in the first place. Remember that UDP is not connection-oriented, so therefore, it does not use a three-way handshake at all. In fact, the three-way handshake actually performs four very specific functions for TCP. Now, these functions are in no particular order. Is the destination port listening? It needs to find that out. Advertisement of ephemeral ports. Advertisement of initial sequence numbers. And advertisement of window sizes. So what I'm going to do in this video is go over in, in a lot of detail each of these four functions above, and then I'll do a live demonstration of the three-way handshake in Wireshark for you. So let's start with the first function of the three-way handshake, which is, is the destination port listening? In TCP, we have a client host that tries to connect to a server host the client always sends the first packet, which is always the SYN. If the server is listening on the destination port of the SYN packet, then it will respond with a SYNAC. If it is not listening, that is the, the server port is closed, then it will not respond with SYNAC, and the connection process terminates there. We now go to the next function of the three-way handshake, which is advertisement of ephemeral ports. Well, the IP address tells TCP IP what host to go to. The port number says where on the host to go, specifically what application to go to. There are two types of ports, well-known ports and ephemeral ports. Examples of well-known ports are port 80 for HTTP, port 443 for HTTPS, and port 23 for Telnet. So if the client wants to connect to a specific web server, the first packet of the three-way handshake will show the destination port of 80 and a source port of some random number greater than 1023, such as 12345. Now 12345, suppose that's chosen at random by the client. That would be called the ephemeral port. The server must be aware of this ephemeral port number to allow it to communicate back to the correct application process of the client. We go to the next function of the three-way handshake, which is advertisement of ISNs. ISN stands for initial sequence number. But before we can understand what an initial sequence number is, we need to understand the concept of what any sequence number is in general. TCP numbers all data bytes that are transmitted during a connection, and TCP keeps track of the sequence number to maintain its reliability. However, the first sequence number is called an ISN, remember that's initial sequence number, and is randomly generated for security purposes. If security were not a concern, we might simply start counting the sequence numbers at zero, in which case the uh, TCP handshake uh, might not be necessary for this particular function. So TCP IP, or TCP, begins counting bytes from the initial sequence number and not zero. To be clear, the sequence number refers to the byte number and not the segment or the packet number. Now supposing the ISN were 1147 
and the total number of data to be sent was 5,000 bytes. Then the bytes would be numbered from 11,147 to, excuse me, they would be numbered from 1147 to 6147. Now specifically, the sequence number for each segment is the number of the first byte of data carried by that segment. Now working hand in hand with the sequence number is the acknowledgement number. This is used by TCP to acknowledge that it has received data. Specifically, the acknowledgement number defines the number of the next byte that TCP expects to receive. Note that the acknowledgement is cumulative. This means that TCP takes the number of the last byte that it receives, adds one to it, and then advertises this sum as the acknowledgement number. Finally, we go to the last function of the three-way handshake, which is advertisement of window sizes. So where does the window size come in? It defines how much data host A can send before receiving an acknowledgement back from host B. So suppose host A advertises a window size of 8,000 bytes. In this way, host A is saying to host B, don't send me more than 8,000 bytes until I send you an acknowledgement. And host B must obey. This is not a negotiation. With these concepts in mind, let's finally see how the three-way handshake goes. So segment one, the client sends a segment to the server with the SIM flag. The client generates an initial sequence number at random, and it sends it to the server. Segment two, the server responds with a SIN and the ACK flags set. This, this particular segment has two functions. The first function is the SIN for communication in the other direction. The server uses this segment to initialize the sequence number for numbering the bytes sent from the server to the client. And the second function is to acknowledge the receipt of the segment from the client by setting the ACK flag and generating an acknowledgement number, which is the next sequence number it expects to receive from the client. And finally, we get the third and last packet or segment. And there, the client responds with this third segment with the ACK flag set only. It's acknowledging that it received the second segment's initial segment number, or initial sequence number. This is the end of part one of a two-part video. In part two, we look at the three-way handshake in a great deal of detail in Wireshark. Make sure to look for that. Bye now.